What's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to check out a new add-on for creating clay inside of Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this video, we're checking out the Potter's Touch Clay Collection from B Production. Um, I've talked about their add-ons before. Specifically, I've talked about Real Wood Textures, which is a great wood texture collection from B Production for creating realistic wood. They also have a car paint collection as well. This one is going to be a collection of clay textures that you can bring in and create realistic looking clay um, in an adjustable way. Now one thing I will say about this is I would like to see these all combined in like an overall add-on as well, just kind of like a material library add-on. I don't know if that's anything that might happen in the future, but it would be kind of cool to just see like the B production materials collection, just make it like a complete materials add-on. But in the meantime, uh, we can check this out. Note that I did receive a copy of that add-on on from the developer in order to try out. I'll also link to it, that is an affiliate link. And so there's options in there for a 2K, a 4K, and an 8K. Um, generally, I kind of avoid going up to 8K on things just because I don't need it, but depending on what you're doing, um, you can get the super high resolution stuff for a little bit more than the lower resolution stuff. But if we jump over into Blender, let's take a look at what these materials contain. So basically this material collection, I'll go ahead and I'll uh, bring this page up right here. It's got a bunch of different kinds of clay materials. And so they've got different looks associated with them. So for example, let's say we were to take this clay material and we'll apply it to this object right here. It's going to look like clay. Um, and what you wanna do in a situation like this is first off, we're gonna add a subdivision surface modifier in here just in order to make this look smoother. But if we go to a top-down view on this object right here, notice how this has created a pretty realistic clay look on top of this surface. And so the cool thing about these is first off, they're pretty lightweight, which I actually really like. Um, I like the lightweight PBR materials that you can drop in and then just adjust. But it's got all the things you would expect. Like for example, you can adjust the roughness in order to make the clay look drier or less dry. Um, and we'll go ahead and just jump over into material preview mode so you can get just kind of an idea of what this is doing without having to wait for this to render. But you've got options for roughness. You've also got options for adding a sheen on the outside. So the sheen is just gonna be kind of a reflectivity in here, as well as things like adjusting the texture scale, as well as the X and Y offset. So you can basically set how this sits on the surface. That's pretty easy to do. Now, one of the things I really like about this is the displacement. So the displacement is gonna be something that's only gonna show up when you're rendering in cycles, at least right now, until EV gets displacement added, which I think is coming up in a pretty, I think that's coming up in, that might be in Blender 4.2 actually. Uh, I'd have to go check the release notes. But the cool thing about this is the displacement is actually really powerful in here. One thing that I do recommend is with an object like this one that you toggle on that adaptive subdivision. Remember you need to go in your uh, EV or your cycle settings. Make sure you toggle on the experimental feature set. But then when you add that material on here and you try to do the displacement, if you toggle the adaptive subdivision in here, then it's going to automatically subdivide this in order to get you that more realistic look. And again, notice how the more you drag this displacement up, the more this is going to be displaced. Obviously, you probably don't want it to be displaced this far, but you can use this in order to create some pretty cool displacement and results in here. So notice how as you play around with this a little bit more, um, you start getting really cool and realistic results. And you could couple this with like, um, you could couple this with sculpting in Blender because it's a material, right? Um, it's going to work on basically any mesh, but we've got a number of different options in here. So you've got this one right here. Notice how you've got clays that have more like deeper fingerprints in them, as well as clays that have like the longer streaks, depending on the look that you're going for. But you can just kind of drag these on the surfaces right here. We'll go to our shader editor, do a little adaptive subdivision in here, and we're gonna bring the displacement power on this one down because it's a little over displaced. And note that you can adjust the colors associated with this clay really easy just using the settings inside of the shader editor. So you can create different colored 
clays in here, but I, I really like the result that this is generating and it's really lightweight. So that's really what I like about it is even for something that's rendering in cycles, it's actually rendering really quickly and it's allowing me to create this level of detail without me having to do a whole lot of extra work. So say that we were to drop into this material collection and we'll add maybe this clay to this surface right here and bring the roughness up to make this look a little more dry just like this. And note that in addition to being able to adjust the overall displacement power, you can also adjust the mid-level, which is going to um, help adjust kind of how this is uh, inflated a little bit. So you can see how when it was a little bit lower, this looked a little puffy, but if you bring the displacement mid-level down a little bit, then it's gonna give you a lighter result like this. So there is also an option here for frame stepping. And so if you set frame stepping, what this is going to do is this is going to animate the movement of your texture. Notice how it moves the texture around every 10 frames. This is a little bit of an odd one to me in the sense that, I mean, I guess you might want this to move, but it doesn't really seem to be moving in like a linear fashion. I mean, maybe it's rotating a little bit. Um, you can adjust the speed, right? So if you do five frames, it's going to animate faster, but I'm not sure if it's just animating between different locations on here or what. So I'm, I'm not sure exactly what property of this it's animating other than just the movement, which seems to just kind of move it randomly on the surface. Um, so it would be cool if you could maybe uh, do a frame stepping or an animation where it adjusted the displacement, which I guess would just be keyframing. So if you took, um, if you took your displacement and you keyframed it so you could set a keyframe for your displacement at zero right here so you could replace that keyframe and then at like 30 you could have your power of 0.103 like this and then you could keyframe it again so if we did that then that would animate between or should animate between that level so as you play and obviously we would have to let this render out, but notice how at 10 frames, it would look like this. At 20 frames, it would look like this with a little bit heavier displacement in here. And then at 30 frames, it would look like this. So it would like progressively go from smooth to not smooth. So you can also keyframe these values for animation as well, which I think has some interesting possibilities. All right, so definitely kind of a niche add-on. I mean, if you don't need to use clay, you obviously don't need this add-on, but if you are looking for some lightweight, easy to use clay textures, this PBR set actually is pretty good for that kind of thing. So leave a comment below, let me know what you think. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.